Hi there, my name is Thomas Stainer and I'm a data scientist at Jigsaw. Today I'm going to explain how to use survival analysis to help understand churn. But what do I mean with churn? Well, not this, or this, but this. Employee churn, or otherwise known as turnover. The rate at which employees leave a workforce and are subsequently replaced. Churn can be a severe problem that needs to be addressed. Besides the cost of investment, that is recruitment, hiring and training, we are all too aware of the impact on team morale and company image. To give you an example, in an extreme case with 20% year-on-year loss of your workforce, the half-life of your company is a mere 3.1 years. That means that if you start your company with 100 employees, after one year you will be left with 80 employees, after two years 64 employees, and after 3.1 years only 50 employees, that is half of your workforce. Now, we will never live in a world with a 100% efficient and productive workforce, and people will always leave a company at some point. However, we can improve by constantly looking at ways of reducing turnover and better understanding the drivers for it. Prediction aside, we need to gain insights into the why. One potential way to do so is to use the set of statistical approaches known as survival analysis. As is in the name, survival analysis is focused on surviving that is, the probability of surviving until a given time. It is prevalent in medicine and is considered the gold standard for many medical trials. For example, it can be used to understand and model the efficacy of a drug for a disease. It is also widely applicable to areas outside of medicine. Financial companies use it for credit risk assessment. In criminal justice, they use it to identify predictors of criminal recidivism. And in marketing, survival analysis is used to understand customer retention. Now, let's look at survival analysis in HR and start with a question. Are employees who drive to work more likely to leave compared to people who cycle? Answering burning questions like this one, testing hypotheses and comparing certain demographics of people is really where survival analysis excels. If you have the right data about employees and their attrition, certain hypotheses can be tested and help to answer some key questions about churn. To answer this question, let's first denote the survival function as the probability that the time until death, or an event, is after some point in time, formerly known as described here. The survival function therefore cannot exceed one, it cannot be negative at any point in time, and it does not increase with time. Notice in the example here, it starts at 1 and tends to 0, but never actually hits 0, meaning that there is still a slim chance of surviving past 16 years. Here we can see that the median tenure is just over 6.5 years. Put another way, workers have a 50% chance of leaving within the first 6.5 years, which is actually not a bad tenure. Now, back to our question. Are employees who drive to work more likely to leave compared to people who cycle? For this video, I have engineered a rather contrived data set of people with certain biases towards different transport methods. Rita takes her bike to work because she feels there's already too much pollution, while Johnny drives to prevent messing up his hair. Lisa and Damien live together, work together and take the train together. Now we can simply compute our survival function for each group and then compare them. Train is labelled in red, car is labelled in green, bus is in orange, bike is in blue, and other methods, including walking, is labelled by purple. We can now clearly see that if you commute to work via train, you are at most risk for leaving. We can also see a clear difference between cyclists in blue and car drivers in green. While the probability of cyclists to stay after 16 years is around 80%, for those who come by car, this is close to zero. We started out with a question. Are employees who drive to work more likely to leave compared to people who cycle? By examining and comparing survival functions for different populations, we can start to gain insights into the drivers of churn. And indeed, it looks like Johnny's chances of surviving longer than 14 years are pretty slim. But remember, correlation is not causation. Ideally, we would need to confirm these findings through a set of experiments. However, we can already use this information to act on the insights and can help motivate change at the workplace. For example, if you know employees who drive to work are much more likely to leave earlier compared to cyclists, what could be causing this? You could set up a campaign to advertise coming to work by bike and promote a discount scheme, for example. 
Of course, cycling to work is simply not possible for some commuters, and in that case, promoting working from home or flexible working to reduce commute times are possible approaches. The key here is to use your data to get actionable insights on your workforce, and then to act on those insights and repeat. Test, learn, experiment, and improve. That concludes part one of the series on survival analysis. In the next part, I will aim to go deeper into the methods and focus on sensory, so stay tuned.